Knowledge base. All offerings whose blood is applied to the inner altar, if it omitted any of the applications, he has not affected a point atonement. Therefore, if he applied all of them properly and one improperly, it's invalid. But it bears no chorus. There are things of which one is not liable for pickle. The kumits, frankincense, incense, mincha offering of kohanim, mincha offering of the anointed kohen, the libation mincha offering of blood, and the libation offerings which, uh, which are brought separately. These are the words of Rabbi Meir, but the Chachamim say even those which are brought with the with the with the animal offering. The log, the, the log of oil of the Mitzvah, the Rabbi Shimon says one is not liable for a pigle, but Rabbi Meir says one is liable for a pigle because the blood of the Asham offering renders it permissible, and whatever has a permitting substance, whether it's for people or to the altar, one is liable for pigle. The oil offering, its blood renders in the meat permissible to burn upon the altar, and is high to the Kohanim. The bird's ola, its blood renders its meat permissible to burn upon the altar, and the bird katos, its blood renders its meat permissible to the kohanim. The bulls which are burned and the hegos which are burned, their blood renders their sacrificial parts permissible for offering upon the altar. Reb Shimon says, whatever is not offered on the altar, out of altar, like the shazaman, one is not liable for it for pigle. Okay. Um, Koche Goyim, non Jews are allowed to bring korbanos as well. So now, if uh, if the, uh, the non-Jews specifically actually are only really supposed to bring an ola, um, the the fully burned offering. Right. Now, what happens if uh, you still have to have a coin officiating, and for that to go on the mizbech? Now, what happens if he had a pigle thought, and uh, and and messed up the korban, and then somebody else went and decided to eat it? Is that called uh, is that called pigle? Also, nosa if it's left over from the time it gets uh, mm. it, it becomes nosa or if, if it becomes tame. Okay, so do you become chayav on that? Well. According to uh, to Rabbi Meir, no. En chayavim alei mishum pigul to nosar tamei v'ashochet and v'chutz pator. And if somebody takes a korban that was given by a non-Jew to be uh, to be an ola, and he shechts it outside the the, the azara, he's pator according to Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yossi mechayev. Okay, wait, and normally when you have Rabbi Yossi pitted against anyone, let alone Rabbi Meir, um, then the halacha is going to follow Rabbi Rabbi Yossi. I, I don't I don't mean this in a bad way. But I'm not sure I understand why the the, the um, basic this was built for the Jews. Why were not Jews allowed to bring korbanos? Why do you think the? You, let me question your first assumption. Why was the basic mikdash? Why do you think it was built only for the Jews? It, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have said that. It was really built for everyone. Hashem wanted everyone to to be able to to come. I think and and uh, be a part of that. Maybe they would just bring the bracha to the world. Right. Was, Maybe it would change, they would change their ways or something, and you know. Convert to whatever you know, whatever you want for it, you know. Yeah. No, non Jews, non Jews were certainly allowed to bring korbanas. They were allowed to enter the mikdash up to the chayl. They could come, they could come all the way up to the chayl, and that was that was where they had to stop. Um, but, but they, were not allowed to, they were not allowed to particip participate in, in Pesach in terms of the. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, the, uh, even even a, a non circumcised Jew couldn't uh, couldn't have the korban Pesach. Okay. Um, all right, so Devarim she ain chayvim alehem mishum pigul chayvim alehem mishum nosa mishum tame. So things like the comets, all those things that we listed before, that that there's no there's no pigul on them because they themselves are the matir. Nonetheless, they still have a din of nosa and uh, and and tame that that you can be you can be chayv for for eating uh, for eating those if they if they became tame if they if they were left over from the time. Chutz uh, min hadam, except for blood. Blood is not considered food enough that it's that you would be high for for eating a tame or eating it after the time. I mean, you you're high for eating dam. That's that's you know it's us to eat the, to eat blood, but uh, uh, but in terms of the extra iser of uh, pigle and uh, of pigle nasa and tame, it's not uh, it's not in the parasha. Rabbi Shemon Omer, this is only with things that are uh, that are normally eaten. So, for example, you know, flower offerings. Even if the, even if a comet is going to go on the mizbeach, it's still something that's normally that's normally eaten. Aval kagona eats him. Balavona bakatoris. So things like wood and uh, and, and uh, frankincense and uh, and katoris. Ein chayvim aleim mishum tuma. You don't be you don't uh, be you don't get uh, any chiyuv for for tuma. Um, that if 
if he if he ate something from there, I mean, okay, it's not really food, but um, perhaps Lavona might be uh, might have some flavor to it. Um, when when a person is tame, he doesn't get kares. However, the Chacham disagree with Rabbi Shimon and say that even even wood, even frankincense, you you have for for tuma, uh, because uh, they learned right from the pasuk for basar sheyiga b'chol tame, right? Is it? Um, it's uh, it's it's coming to include okay then the halacha follows the chachamim that that you can become chayav even for uh, for tuma on on these inedible things okay okay the shame shisha dvarim hazeva nizbach so there are six intentions that uh that a person uh, that a person has to have for uh, for a korban okay um. So what is it? L'shem zevach. So okay, which kind of zevach is it going to be? You got to have the court. You got to have the intention. Is this a shlamim? Is this a naola? Or what? What is it? Okay, l'shem zevach. And for whom is it being brought? So the kohen, obviously the guy who's bringing it himself, he has uh, intention for himself. But the kohen has to know who is this korban. He, he's 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 receiving the blood for this korban. Who's it, who's it for? He has to know who it's for. Okay, l'shem hashem. And you've got it's obviously got to be made l'shem Hashem that this is a korban to Hashem, not to anyone or anything else. Chas for shalom. L'shem ishim um, for uh, for burning. Okay, so what does it mean when we say l'shem ishim um, for the sake of burning on the on the mizbeach, or um, and, and not just like to make a barbecue with it, right? When you're doing it, when you're doing this, the shechita, the kabbalah, etc. It's all meant to be going on the mizbeach. Okay, l'shem reach for the for the smell. Right, in order to to bring up a, a smell from the mizbeach, and not just to to roast it um, outside for, for something else, and afterwards to bring it, right? Shuv, right? The 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 reach is is going to be coming from from the mizbeach. Or the shem nichoach is a pleasing fragrance, right? What is what does it mean that you've got to have this nichoach? Um, in order to give nachas, is so a nichoach is from the same root as nachas. Nachas ruach Hashem, in order to to bring a pleasing fra- uh, fragrance to to Hashem, um, all of this is taken from from the pesukim. Okay, so these are the six uh, six intentions that a person should have for for the mizbeach, and if you get them wrong, then it can mess up the the korban. Oh, says Rabbi Yossi, so, and then and when it comes to chatas and asham, those are brought for a specific chait, and therefore you've got to have in mind what's the chait that you're bringing this korban for. I'm a Rabbi Yossi. Not so bad. Don't worry. says, these are not ma'akev. You don't have to have these things. It's only if you have a contrary intention to any of these things that it gets messed up. But if a person just comes and uh, and shechts and, and he's thinking about his, you know, the, the snails in his garden, you know, that's... It's irrelevant. That's fine. It doesn't. It, it, it's not a positive requirement to have one of these intentions as long as you don't have a negating intention for any of these things. Um, and it's uh, sh- why he says shit tonight based in shit tonight based in. It's this is something that based in was kovea that she ain ha machshava ho leches ela acher ha obed that the only the only thing that you need for machshava for the kohen is is nothing. It's it's all according to the intention of the person bringing the korban, and that, that everything goes according to his intention, and you, so you don't have to spill out to the coin. Listen, um, this is for the chait that I did, uh, which was, <laughs> you know, you don't have you, you don't have to do a, a video to the coin telling what chait you did. You don't have to say this is uh, anything. I mean, it's it's a good idea to tell the coin. Well, this is going to be an ola because it, because it depends, you know, where he's going to sprinkle the blood and what what parts he's going to put on the mizbeach, etc. But uh, but there's no positive requirements on the on the on the coin to have uh, das for any for any particular thing. <clears throat> okay. Now we move on to uh, uh, um, the peric that's uh, inserted in the siddur just before davening, before psuket de zimra ezu makoman. Uh, it's just a, a list of all of the of all of the, the different korbanos. It, it's an it's a nice summary of all of the different types of korbanos that we have in the mikdash. Where the avoda is held and uh, where the blood is sprinkled, what what's done with the parts and the meat, etc. So we're starting with the highest kedusha. So the, the holy of holies, 
Shechitas and Vitzafon. So anything, so anything that's called Kodshe Kodshim, which is um, basically anything that that cannot be removed from the Azara. So we've got all the the Olas and the Chataos. Um, th- those uh, those are and, and the Asham. Ola Chatas and the Asham are are in are internal. I can't think of anything else. Um, but we'll 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 see as we go along. Parvasair Shal Yom Kippurim. So now we're going to focus among the Kodesh Kodashim. The bull and the and the goats of Yom Kippur, because all of those are done not not just inside, but but in the inside the heichal, the blood goes onto the inner altar. Okay, shechitas uh, and betzafon. So yes, they they they're slaughtered on the north side of the mizbech. The kibul daman beklisharis betzafon, and you have to receive their blood in a service vessel in the north. But daman ta'un hazaya al bein habadim. And they need a sprinkling. The blood needs to be sprinkled, not just on the mizbeach, but between the staves of the of the Arab. because the the coin is going into the kodesh hakodeshim on Yom Kippur, and he's doing the sprinkling there. Well, a paroches, and he comes out again, and he sprinkles to uh, to the paroches. Well, mizbeach has a and onto the golden the golden mizbeach. Matana achas mehen akevis, and if he leaves out a single application, the whole thing is puzzled. And um, he has to, when he comes out of the of the ulam, um, he he pours out the remnants. Remember, there, there are two there are two drains uh, drain holes on the side of the mizbeach. They're right next to each other, actually. Hmm? That was one on top of the other. The one so, is wider, right? No, no, that. So you're talking about that. Those the, you're thinking of the the jugs that are on top of them is bare. With you, at the base of them is bare. There are two drainage holes, right? Um, and one is on one is sort of on the westerly side facing the the ulam, and one is on the southerly side facing to, towards the ramp. And whichever right. one the coin is closest to at the time, that's the one he's going to pour into. So when he's coming out of the ulam, the one he's closest to is the one on the westerly side. Okay. So he pours. So he pours it down the the the, the westerly drain. Shere Adam haya shopech al yisod maravi shal mizbech kitzon im lo nasan lo ikev. But if he didn't, uh, if he didn't pour it there, no, it's not. Uh, that's not an ikar part of the avoda. That's just disposing of the remainders and and zeal. Okay. Um. Horeos. Finishing this today, I think. I finished today. Okay, almost. Uh, who is the anointed Kohen? The one anointed with the anointing oil, uh, not the one invested through the additional investments. And there's no difference between the Kohen who is anointed with the anointing oil and a Kohen invested through the additional investments, other than the bull which comes for all the commandments. And there is no difference between a serving Kohen and a Kohen who passed from his anointment, other than the bull of the day of the anointment and the tenth of the Yankha. Both uh, this one and that one are equal with respect to the Yom um, Kippur service and are abandoned concerning a virgin and are forbidden to marry a widow and they may not contract a tumor from their uh, deceased relatives. Do their, uh, do not grow their hair and do not rend their garments and they bring about the return of the murderer. The Kohen Gadol uh, rends his garments from the bottom but an ordinary Kohen rends from the top. The Kohen Gadol will sacrifice while in, in, in owning but may not eat. The ordinary Kohen may either, neither eat nor sacrifice uh I, 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 no, I sacrifice nor eat. Man takes precedence over a woman in matters pertaining to life and returning to a lost article. A woman takes precedence. Oh no, no, we've done we've done three there. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow we go to the Zavachim. Um. Yeah. Tomorrow we go, go back to the Zavachim. Correct. Okay. Avos. Okay. Base Ted Vav. Base Zion. Vav Vav. He used to say, you are not required to complete the task, and yet you are not free to withdraw from it. If you have not studied much Torah, they give you great reward. No, I'm sorry. If you have studied much Torah, they give you great reward. And your employer can be relied upon to pay you the wage of your labor. Be aware that the reward of the righteous will be given in the world to come. Akavi Ben Mahalo says, consider three things, and you will not come into the grip of uh, uh, sin. Know whence you came, whether you go, and from whence you are destined to give judgment and accounting. Whence you came from a future drop, whether you go to a place of dust, worms, and uh, maggots, and before whom you are destined to give judgment and accounting, before the king who reigns over kings, the holy one, blessed is he. 
Now, at Kenia, the deputy going battle said, pray for the welfare of the government, because if people did not fear it, a person would swallow his fellow lie. So Kenia by Trajan said, when two people are sitting together, and there are no words of Torah between them, there is, this is a session of scorners. And it is, and it is stated the session of scorners, he did not, uh, and in the session of scorners, he did not sit. But two who are sitting together and share the words of Torah between them, the divine presence dwells between them. As if it is stated, those are then those who fear Hashem spoke to each other, and Hashem listened and heard, and a book of remembrance was written before him for those who, who fear Hashem and have given thought to his name. I have only known from two. So I only know two. From where do we know that even one person who sits and occupies himself with Torah, that the Holy One, blessed as he dominates, and determines a reward for him? As it is stated, let one sit in solitude and whisper, for he has taken uh, he has taken a reward for it. Okay, um, no, no, that's it. Um, Sanhedrin test base. One who sold, one who's aimed to kill an animal, but killed a human for whom he, for who aimed to kill a gentile. I'm sorry. One who aimed to kill an animal but killed a human, or who aimed to kill a Gentile but killed a Jew, or who aimed to kill a premature baby but killed a viable one, is exempt. If he sinned, uh, to, if, he, if he sinned to strike him on his loins, and the force of the blow was not sufficient to kill at that spot, but it struck his chest where its force was sufficient to kill, and he died, he's exempt. If he sinned to strike him on his chest, and the blow contained sufficient force to kill him at the spot, but it struck its loins where its force was insufficient to kill, and he died, he is exempt. If he aimed to strike an adult, and the force was not sufficient to kill an adult, but it struck a child whom it was sufficient to kill, and he died, he is exempt. If he aimed to strike a child, and the force was sufficient to kill a child, but it struck an animal, an adult who was not sufficient to kill, and he died, he is exempt. However, if he aimed to strike him on his loins, and the force was sufficient to kill him at the spot, but he struck his chest, and he died, he is liable. If he aimed to strike an adult, and the free and the force was sufficient if it killed to kill an adult, but it struck a child and he died, he's liable. The machine says, even if if, if if we aim to kill this one and we kill that one, he is exempt. Um when they say he, he's exempt, right? That one is right. If you if he aimed to kill Fred and he killed Bob, then he's butter. Right. But he had nothing, this has nothing to do with ear uh, It's what? That's nothing to do with the ear miklot. Yes, no, no, no. This is talking about where he was warned, and uh, you know you're going to be chayav misa if you kill if you kill somebody. If he murdered, uh, uh, if a murdered identity was lost in a group, they are all exempt. The Rebbe Huda says we place them in a cell. Anytime people sentenced to execution become confused with another, they are subject subjected to the most lenient one. If one sentenced to be stoned because they're confused with those sentenced to be burned, Rebbe Shimon says they are all executed by stoning. Um, as burning is more severe, but the sages say they are executed by burning as stoning is more severe. Said Reb Shimon to them, if burning was not more severe, it would not have been made out in the door of a Kohen who commits adultery. They said then, if stoning was not more severe, it would not have been made out to the blasphemer and to the idolater. If those who would be headed became confused and uh, and those who became who, those who be strangled. Rav Shimon says they are executed by heading, but the sages say by strangulation. Okay. And well, yeah. right, one one who became liable to two forms of execution is subject to the more severe one form. If he committed a transgression which was punishable by the two forms of execution, he is subject to the more severe uh, one. Rav Yossi says he is subject to the one by which he was uh, first enjoined. Okay. Subos Zion uh, If one pronounced the vow on his wife that she should not adorn herself with a certain item, he must divorce her and then give her uh, her ketubah. Rabbi Yossi, Yossi says, in the case of poor women, if he did not give a limit to the case of rich women, oh, if he did not give a limit to the case of poor rich women, they have 30 days. If one pronounced the vow on his wife that she should not go to her father's house, uh, when he is with her in the city one month, he may keep her with two months. He no, keep, no, her, no, keep her with two months. Yeah. Two months, he must divorce her and he give her the kasuba. When he is in another city, one festival, he may keep her. Three festivals, he must divorce her and give her the kasuba. If one pronounces a vow on his wife that she should not go to a house of mourning or a house of fasting, 
he must divorce her and give her the ketubah because he locks the door before her. And, but if he claims that he was due to some other cause, he may. If he said to her on the condition that you tell so-and-so what you said to me and what I said to you or that you fill up and pour out uh, with the garbage, he must divorce her and give her the ketubah. Okay. Okay. Slipping in my words today. Ruma. Fennig fell into a wine vat of truma or maizashani. If the seed was sufficient to impart a flavor, but it's not the silk, the stalk, if uh, about the seventh year of vineyard kalayim or head peg dish, if the seed is a wood, impart a flavor. If one had bundles of fennig or vineyard kalayim, they must be burnt. If he had bundles of fennig, table fennig Greek, he must beat them and calculate how much seed they contain and separate from the seed. But he need not separate with the stalk. If he separated, he must not say, "I shall be and take the stalks and give them to the give the, give the give the weeds." But he must give the stalks with the weeds, with the seeds. Gee, I can't read over here. If one pickled olives of kulam with tuma, tuma olives, when the crushed ones ones of kulam with crushed ones of tuma, or crushed ones of kulam with whole ones of tuma, or in tuma water, they are forbidden. But one whole ones of kulam. The crushed ones of Tuma are permitted. Okay. This is what happens when you don't get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. You're talking about me or you? Me. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, we have Teth. Utensils that are between the edges of the olive poop pressing basket and the edges of the cistern remain tower, even if they are deep within the ground. If there is Tuma inside the cistern, the house becomes Tome. If there is Tuma inside the house, the utensils that are inside the walls of the cistern remain tahor while they are in the outer area that is hand breath cube. When they are not, they become tummy. If the walls of the cistern extend farther than the house in either instances, they remain tahor. A board is placed on top of a new oven and extends a hand breath at all the sides. If there is tuma in beneath the board, the utensils above it remain tahor. If there is tuma above the board, the utensils below but beneath it remain tahor. However, in the case of an old stove, the oven became tummy, Rabbi Menorah was a tahor. If the board is placed on top of the two ovens and there is a tummy, tuma between them, they become tummy. Rabbi Yochanan Menorah declares them tahor. A perforated slab is set on top of the oven whose opening is sealed. If there is tuma beneath or above the slab, everything becomes tummy. Except for what is directly above the inside of the oven, which is directly tahor, which, which remains tahor. If there is tuma above the sides of the oven, whatever is directly above the tuma until the sky becomes tummy. Okay. But can. Okay. I will okay. see you tomorrow, uh, Thursday, Wednesday. Yeah.